numbers! Welcome Buccaneers to the Pixel Pirate program. This is your host Pixel Pirate and in this week's episode we take a look at Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition gameplay trailer, more on DayZ created games delay, the THQ Humble Bundle, and the Zynga revamp partnership with Facebook. And unless you have been living under a rock for the last several months, you'd know that Baldur's Gate is undergoing a revamp. It is it's entitled Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition, and we happen to have a gameplay trailer, so let's take a look at that now. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourselves. Are your girls as clean as an elven arse? Let's give them a right back! And if you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. I will show you just <laughs> That's a despise, isn't it? If you do not understand this now, then I think that makes me do your bidding. You have but to ask. Check it out! Check it out! I did that one on purpose! Get out of my sight before I burn your eyes from their sockets! I shall attempt to Walking alone trust. in the Coastway Road, how smart is this? You know what they say about my Now you're going to be sorry! And so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the gameplay trailer for Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. I am of two minds about this because I was under the impression that it would be enhanced. And it is somewhat enhanced, there are new characters and things like that. However, uh, it's there's, there's the graphics, the animations, they're all the same as the original game. I was under the impression that they were going to be revamping all of that stuff. Uh, but just for a recap for what they have changed... They've uh, put in a new adventure called The Black Pits. They've put in three new characters, a new collection of player voice sets, native support for high-resolution widescreen displays, which is good, uh, over 400 improvements to the original game, I'm tipping their bug fixes, and improved multiplayer support with connectivity between all platforms. And it is being released on Windows, iPad, Mac, and Android. So you can uh, play it on your iPad, which is a good thing. But uh, I think it's just not enough. Now, the price point uh, for Windows is $19.99 uh, US. So that's not too bad considering what you get. But I was, I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed, I have to be honest. I thought there would be a vast revamping of, of all the art assets and things like that. And, and there's just not. I would be happy if the art assets were the same. If they improved the animations. But they haven't done that either as far as I can see. So... Uh, I'll probably still pick it up, but uh, I'll pick it up with a meh. DayZ's creator has cast doubt on whether or not the game will be released in December. I quote, We really don't know, it's still our target, but the architectural changes are scheduled to be complete next week. These are still on track to be completed then, but we really don't know entirely what effect these changes will have, if any. So there could be a massive amount of unforeseen work that comes out. We just don't know until it's done and we test. He goes on to say, The changes we've been making are so fundamental to the game that estimates can be a bit of a stab in the dark. The lucky thing is, so far nearly everything has taken less, even much less time than we expected. Regardless, we'll be into some open testing this year anyway, as we need to capacity test. So the likelihood of seeing something is high, even if we did push a release date. Officially, the game has not been delayed, but it may be pushed back. During Gamescom, he also discussed the possibility of a console version of DayZ, but that the game would need to be a commercial success by a high factor before it was ported. So he's hoping for all those consoleites that the sales are high for the PC so they can come and see some DayZ action. And the Humble Bundle has released their latest bundle, the Humble THQ Bundle. You can pick up Darksiders, 
Metro 2033, Red Faction Armageddon, Company of Heroes, Company of Heroes Opposing Fronts, Company of Heroes Tales of Vela, and if you meet the average price of what is currently $5.64, you can get Saints Row the Third. It currently has nine days left on it as of the time of this recording, and it has sold over 560,000 copies. Currently, it is up to $3.2 million. So that is good news for THQ, who are struggling at the moment big time. And I can't think of a developer that is more deserving of help than THQ. They do nothing but release quality, quality games. And it is a damn shame that they could be, very well could be going under. There has been some controversy that the games are only available on Steam and there are no DRM-free versions of the games, which is understandable considering D THQ are a AAA developer. But some say that the Humble Bundle is moving away from its roots. I personally think that they're helping a developer in need, even though there's no DRM versions of these games and that you can only pick them up on Steam. I really don't see a problem with that. Most of the games that the that are, that are in the Humble Bundle are available on Steam anyway. I can't see a huge majority of people picking up the DRM-free versions of the games. I could be wrong, but I really don't see it as a big deal. And lastly, the partnership between Zynga and Facebook has been revamped. The agreement is seen by a move by Facebook to level the playing field between Zynga and the other game makers that are currently on Facebook. The new terms allow Zynga to offer more flexibility with its games on its own website. However, Zynga's shares fell 13% the first day after trading after the announcement. According to statistics, Zynga contributes more than 15% of Facebook's total revenues. This coupled with an already plummeting share price and its lawsuit with EA spells trouble for Zynga, I think. And it couldn't happen to a better developer, to be quite honest. I think Zynga's practices, as far as copyright go, are very suspect. And even though it's EA that they're, they've angered, they do in fact rip off many other developers that aren't EA. So it's really difficult to actually feel sorry for them in any way, shape or form, with their demise in various forms. And that is it for this week's The Pixel Pirate Program. Thanks everyone for listening and watching, and we'll see you next week.